Hi everyone. If you knew someone prior to 2020 who wouldn't enter a shop without sanitizing their hands, who always wore a face mask and who always kept their distance from other people, even from their nearest and dearest, all out of fear of getting a virus, what would you say? I think most of us would say that that person had some sort of disorder and there are uh, known disorders about this, the fear uh, of getting a virus. Now, prior to 2020, that was a disorder, but now it's pretty much, I say pretty much everyone, but there are an awful lot of people who have that, what they call COVID anxiety syndrome. I was reading an article about it in the mail uh, earlier today, Fear of Freedom Day. Therapists warn of huge rise in anxiety one week before COVID rules are removed, as 50% of public want restrictions to stay, and two thirds say they will wear a mask at the shop or supermarket. I've seen this myself. Some of the people I know on, on social media have been saying that I'm going to keep wearing a mask. Some people are saying, were well, worried about the uh, Euro 2020 final last night, about all those people packed into Wembley uh, and so on and so forth. You know, people are very anxious. So what do we make of all of that? Well, there are four things that I want to say um, about this. The first thing is that this, this um, anxiety is, is irrational and disproportionate. So I was looking up um, on the QCOVID website. This is a, a website that Oxford University have come up with. They analyse the data from the first wave and they calculated the risk of dying from COVID for people in different groups. So I put in the details of a man who's 75 years old with no underlying health conditions, just, you know, similar um, height and build to myself. Absolute risk is 0.904%. That's one in 1,106. So in a crowd of 10,000 people with this uh, risk factor, nine are likely to catch and die from COVID-19. A nine in 10,000 for a 75-year-old man with no underlying health conditions, that, that level of risk. So this is not a huge level of risk that we're talking about. I wonder if people really know that what, what the actual level of risk for them uh, actually is, because it's likely, I think, to be lower than what most people seem to believe. Similarly, uh, in our um, church staff meeting last week, we were talking about singing in churches and uh, we were talking about how we can, the guidance is being removed and we're going to go back to singing. But some people are still feeling quite anxious about it and some people have been, have got vulnerabilities and been shielding and you know that's understandable but I think some people are just kind of worried in general about all of the restrictions going and again you think is that proportional and and rational you know are the is the two meter rule or the one meter plus rule the only thing which is standing between us and disaster you know the fact that we've spaced chairs out a little bit rather than putting them next to each other and the fact that we're wearing masks rather than, you know, hopefully, God willing, next week, not having to wear one. And, you know, we looked at masks the other day and we saw that the evidence is really pretty weak, that they make very much difference at all. And certainly with when it's similar with social distancing, really. Um, and you think about think about sitting in a service with, you know, 50, 100 other people in the same building. You know, if someone is infected in there, then wearing a mask and distancing is not really going to make very much difference at all because the air is going to circulate. And this is why I think ventilation is actually more a more important thing that we've learned over the last 18 months than, than mask wearing and so on. I think I think ventilation is a good thing, actually. It's always good to have fresh air um, and to keep the air kind of circulating. Um, but really, the, those, the distancing measures, the mask wearing, doesn't reduce the risk factor by very much at all. And and that's that's the thing as well, you know, that people seem to believe that it takes the risk down from, you know, being astronomical to being manageable. But it, it doesn't. I mean, if you were looking at a graph of risk, it would it would be like that, uh, you know, on a um, sorry, I've, I've mixed my metaphors there. But you know what I mean? It's a very small amount that it reduces the risk, if at all. And, you know, we as a human species, we managed pandemics before. They always just died away when enough people have been infected. And, and that's just what happens with pandemics. It's happened all through history without the need for kind of extreme uh, measures. That's what we as human beings, we have immune systems. Um, that's what that's what it's like. OK, the second thing is that the restrictions don't actually help us to get back to normal. The restrictions actually make anxiety worse.
And this is what we've learned. For example, in Laura Dodsworth's book, A State of Fear, um, she talks about the way that masks are a psychological indicator and that they, they instill a sense of fear. So the government introduced them back in summer last year, around about a year ago, because they uh, one of the reasons being that they wanted to encourage people who were worried to come out. And they thought, well, if someone's wearing a mask, it might help. But the problem is it changes your mindset. And so that you start to think, if I go out and nothing terrible happens, well, it must be because of the mask and because everyone else is wearing one. That's the reason why nothing terrible happens. And... Um, and, and it has the opposite effect of actually encouraging us to act normally. You know, by having these restrictions, it actually just instills and promotes this sense of fear. And actually, the third thing is that the restrictions start to take on this kind of superstitious quality that if I go out and nothing terrible happens, well, it's because I've kept two metre distance. It's because of the mask wearing and not because... I have an immune system it's it's very unlikely to meet someone with covid it's very you know it's very unlikely that if i did meet someone they would pass it to me and it's unlikely if they did pass it to me that i would get seriously ill and die you know it's it's percentages of percentages of percentages you know the chances of you actually meeting someone and getting covid and and so on very very small possibility and chance and yet people attribute it all to the restrictions and the restrictions start to take on this kind of religious, superstitious quality. And so we're end, we end up in this situation where when the restrictions are taken away, then it's like the safety blanket is taken away. And I think that's been a real mindset change, actually. And I've, um, my wife, I think, witnessed it in her job or her former job. She was um, a midday assistant at the local school. Um, when she started it... Then they um, through the first wave they didn't have masks. They um, they it was just quite nice and relaxed actually. With um, obviously the school was um, closed, but it was open for key worker children. And um, she said it was quite nice actually in in the first wave. But but then things started to change in the autumn. Masks were were introduced, and she had to wear a mask in her job. And and you know it just started to get very anxious. And, and worrying because of because of that actually and you know the atmosphere she said by the time she finished a couple of months ago but she said the atmosphere at the end was really very different to how it was at the beginning and I think that's the effect of all of the restrictions it has a psychological effect it sends out a message which says it's too dangerous to go out without all of these restrictions in place which which affect our lives and all sorts you can't live a normal life you have to worry about staying away from people you have to worry about wearing a mask you know you have to see everyone as a potential bearer of infection all of that sort of thing and it, it really makes a big psychological difference and that's the problem with all of these restrictions the fourth and final thing that i wanted to say is I don't understand why the church is still so kind of almost obsessed with the restrictions. I mean, obsessed is, is probably too strong a word, but a lot of churches are very, um, you know, wanting to, to visibly make sure that they are still keeping people safe. And that's the thing that, that I can't understand because you know, I just think surely God is, is the one who is keeping people safe. And that in the past, um, that's why Christians would go and, and minister to uh, to victims of the plague, because they believed that God was keeping them safe. They believed that to live is Christ and to die is gain. And it was worth doing that. And I think surely it is worth singing hymns and it is worth being with one another and fellowshipping and having a cup of tea and sharing and talking and all of the, the wonderful things which go on in a Christian uh, community or should go on in the Christian community, rather than putting all of that on pause in the name of safety. And, and this is the thing that, that worries me about all of this, you know, not just about churches, but about everything, that I think these restrictions are going to, to, to stay in place. And I think they could be in place forever because the longer they stay in place, the more they're going to become part of everyday life. And the more that people think, well, they're keeping us safe. And if nothing terrible happens when you go out, then you think, well, it's because they've got those restrictions in place. It's kind of self-reinforcing. 
and the people who are anxious are just you know the more that these restrictions are are adhered to the more that it's just going to reinforce that anxiety i think what we need is actually a dose of normality a dose of kind of going back to just being with each other in the way that we used to and not having to worry about distancing not having to worry about how many people are in a building and yeah you know being sensible of course being sensible taking personal responsibility that's always been that's always been what we should be doing but just you know just loving one another just going back to being family going back to um you know just being with one another um that's what i think we really need to help beat this anxiety and you know i just think this anxiety is it's going to be the new normal unless we actually get back to the old normal unless we return to that i think we're going to be stuck with this people stuck with covid anxiety syndrome forever and that's not a good place to be so anyway let me know what you think in the comments uh, let me know how you think we can move forward from this because um uh yeah I'm, i i must admit i don't want to be pessimistic but um yeah i can't see i can't really see a way forward with the way things are going at the moment short of a work of god which is very possible and as a christian i very much believe that um so i I'm, I'm hoping that that will happen so don't forget to click the like button if you appreciate this video and there is a, a buy me a coffee link there as well if you'd like to support me in that way and i really do appreciate all of your support as um, uh, people have um, commented liked and everything over the last uh, the last few months so thanks so much everyone and i hope to see you again for another video very soon god bless